Ahoy Vashikni. It's Jen from Dream Prague. If you're new to my channel, I'm an American immigrant to the Czech Republic. I live in Prague and I like to share my impressions of life in this beautiful country. But today and for the past four or five days, I really find it hard to think about or talk about anything other than the invasion of Ukraine. Um, I think the internet is overloaded with everyone's hot take on the situation and I don't really want to add noise to that noise. There's so much that I want to talk about. I could talk for 17 hours, but I will try to keep this specific to my perception as an American citizen living in Central Europe in a country that in the not so distant past has suffered from the aggression of its neighbors namely the Soviet Union. I've received a lot of questions from viewers asking what my thoughts are on the situation. And I have different groups, different audiences. So there are the people who watch that aren't from the Czech Republic, but are interested in visiting here someday. So they don't know too much about the, the culture or the history. There are the Czechs who emigrated to North America decades ago. Um, there are the English-speaking expats who live here now, and there are Czech people who are just curious about a foreigner's opinion of their country. And I even have heard from some Slovak and Polish viewers. So I'm going to try to answer broad questions, but please forgive me if what I say is obvious to you because you're Czech or Slovak, or you obviously know, for example, basic Czechoslovak history or the geography of Central Europe. First, let me say that Ukrainians are the number two minority in the Czech Republic after Slovaks, which are we even counting Slovaks as immigrants? Um, so there are a lot of Ukrainians. Hansa and I went to law school here with Ukrainians. Um, there are good friends and it's very common in any friend group or any workplace um, that there will be Ukrainians. So this tragedy is permeating Czech society. It's not something that's happening in another part of the world. We are actually separated from Ukraine by only Poland or Slovakia. So the Czechs are incredibly in tune with what's happening and feel it deeply. Um, so when we donate clothing or food or medicine to be sent to Ukraine, this is not to some big NGO who will send our donations thousands of miles away. We are loading diapers and blankets into private cars um, and someone is driving them to the border of Ukraine. Czechs and many expats here in Prague are opening up their flats, taking in refugees for who knows how long um, and becoming intimately involved in the refugee effort. I want to emphasize this for Americans who might not understand just how closely these two countries and these two cultures are intertwined. As early as the first day of the invasion, I got messages from Czech viewers who asked if I was going to go back to America. And this really shocked me. Uh, I hadn't even considered it. I mean, if war was so close that Czechs were told to evacuate, I'd go along. But this is our home. I can't imagine leaving it. It does highlight my privilege that because I have an American passport, I can just hop on a plane and run away from war on this continent. Um, but no, I'm not considering leaving. However, in many immigrant groups on Facebook, um, there's been some discussion about the possibility of leaving if things got really bad. Um, mostly, from what I can tell, from immigrants who have already left less stable countries. So they're familiar with things going badly quickly. Speaking for myself and probably for other North Americans, we have a naive sense that it would never come to that unless you or someone close to you has had to flee warfare or an unstable regime, you just can't imagine that that would happen to you. That's something that happens somewhere else. Um, many of these people in, immigrants, in the immigrant groups have pointed out that it's good to have a plan. 
and to answer the following questions for yourself. Uh, number one, what is the point that you decide to evacuate? So for example, some have said that if Russian, for if Russian forces entered a NATO country, that's the point that they would evacuate. Number two, where would you go? How would you get there? Plan the most reliable method of transportation and have someone to stay with. This is something I can guarantee that none of my American viewers who live in America think about. They think about how to escape an active shooter in a middle school, but not how to flee an invading army. Number three, decide what you're going to bring and you assemble like a go bag. We've had a go bag for a while ever since there was a fire in our building, but simply gather your most important things, documents, etc., and make them easy to flee with. This has become more familiar to my fellow Californians who live in fire zones, which is pretty much everywhere in California, sadly. But think about what you most need, what's the most important, and put it all together and make sure that it's easy to access. So when I read these posts in the immigrant groups with these, these people who had already thought about this, I felt kind of silly, but I told Hansa, I want to know the answers to these three questions. Um, even though the thought of needing to evacuate seems impossible, but all of this seemed impossible only a few weeks ago. But no, I want to confirm that we have no intention of leaving our home and our city. If anything, watching the Ukrainian people who have remained in Ukraine and President Zelensky have really inspired a um, screw you attitude in me, which makes me want to stay here regardless of what happens. In the weeks preceding this invasion, there was a lot of talk about how Putin's invasion was NATO's fault for expanding too close to Russia's sphere of influence. Um, I'm sure that will be debated for decades by political scientists, but as a soon-to-be Czech citizen, I'm grateful that this country is a part of NATO. Can you imagine right now if the Czech Republic or Slovakia or Poland wasn't guaranteed the full force of NATO Article 5, meaning that an attack on one is considered an attack on all? I mean, right now, Moldova is not a NATO country and they border Ukraine, meaning that if the Russians are successful in taking Ukraine, they can do the exact same thing to, to Moldova and NATO countries would not act to prevent it other than sending supplies. Personally, I think NATO enlargement was used as an excuse and this invasion is more of a lashing out by an aging, deranged, egomaniacal dictator. My favorite analogy that I've heard um, is to imagine Putin as the former abusive boyfriend of Ukraine. And after the Soviet Union fell, Ukraine wanted to be single and maybe date other people. But Russia could not let that happen. Ukraine was not allowed to date other people. And Russia would do anything in its power to prevent it. So when Ukraine expressed interest in dating the EU or, God forbid, going out on a date with NATO, um, Russia freaked out and had to put a stop to it by invading to make sure that she would forever be the property of Russia. I've also gotten comments from Czechs saying that they are a peaceful nation and they don't want to be part of any, ter any military alliance. And I get that, but unfortunately that's just not the way that international relations work and of all people i would think that the czechs would know how vulnerable a small country is to the whims of world powers it's incredibly sad but it's it's also true yesterday we joined the 80,000 people on vatslavsk namesty to show support for the Ukrainians, but the support efforts have been non-stop here in Prague. Everyone is donating supplies. Everyone's joining lists of people to drive to borders or to pick up Ukrainians, refugees at the borders, to take supplies to them. Huge numbers of Czechs and immigrants have opened up their homes to take in refugees. 
I know I've talked about how Czechs don't have the same tradition of giving money to charity as North Americans do, but the generosity and support they are lending to the Ukrainians right now, it's as if they're helping their own families. It's that strong. They often say that history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And from the first two days of this invasion, all I could think about was how closely it echoed both 1938 Czechoslovakia and 1968. In 1938, Hitler claimed that parts of Czechoslovakia should be German, much like Putin is claiming that parts of Ukraine should be Russian, or already are Russian. Hitler swore to the world powers that he would not aggress the rest of Czechoslovakia or the rest of Europe. He just wanted these areas. And within six months, he rolled right into the rest of the country and claimed it without any international power stopping him. This seemed to me exactly like the pretense P Putin was using to go into Ukraine, but instead of using this pretense for weeks and months, to provoke Ukrainian violence, the next frigging day he rolls right into Ukraine. I was gobsmacked, I think everyone was. I literally cannot believe the news the next day. Even Czech President Milos Zeman said that the CIA was embarrassing themselves with bad intel and Putin would never invade. And he actually came out a couple days later and said he was wrong, which was pretty shocking. He deserves credit for that. It reminded me of the scene from Pelishki where the, the army dad believed so fervently in the communists and when they invaded, when the Warsaw Pact countries invaded, he was perhaps more shocked than anyone. I don't know what went through Zaman's mind that night, but he deserves credit for apologizing. I was thinking about that 68 Warsaw Pact invasion so much as I was walking around the quiet city of Prague yesterday. Um, imagine what it's like one day to be going about your business normally, and the next day you have tanks on your streets and foreign armies killing citizens. The Czechs don't have to imagine what that feels like because it happened in living memory. And for the first time since I've moved here, that felt like within the realm of possibility instead of a history lesson. And that's exactly what the Ukrainians are experiencing and so much more. One thing I'd like to add, sadly and a bit self-centeredly, is that as an American citizen, it's refreshing for once to not be on the controversial side of an incredibly unpopular war. Americans carry this burden when we go abroad. We need to separate ourselves from the actions of our government. If you're American and you haven't spent much time abroad, you probably have no idea how controversial American actions are around the world. But the Allies have really come together and are all on the same side and not fighting amongst themselves as they usually do. And it's really nice to see. On Friday, I was in a group Zoom where we all had to introduce ourselves. These are all people in the Czech Republic. We all had to introduce ourselves and our nationality. And there were several Russians and Ukrainians. And the first Russian woman made it very clear in her introduction that she was anti-Putin, anti-war. And I knew intimately the guilt that she felt that her country's government was causing death and pain in the country of some of the other attendees. I felt so much empathy for her and for the Ukrainians in the group who knew in their hearts, even through their pain, that this was not the fault of most of the Russian people. Most of the Russian people in Russia don't even know what's going on. And then an Afghani woman introduced herself and I was like, hi. My point is that it's so easy to blame the person in front of you for the actions of their government. And I know from my Russian friends and acquaintances that they feel very scared and ashamed. But I find that the Czechs and the Ukrainians living here are not taking their anger and their devastation out on the Russian immigrants. And I think that's so important. I think we're all on the same side of this. and. Division of any kind 
is exactly what the other side is counting on. I could go on and on, but I will spare you any more of my anger and my frustration. Um, I hope to be back next week with happier topics. Slava Ukraine. Ahoy.